Islam mode. Islam. Islam. My apologies for being late, but my computer did the blue screen again, and I was making coffee. So Islam, Islam, Islam. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. This class is on how to complete the Affidavit Universal Commercial Code One Financing Statement Lean on these You're breaking statements. up. I'm not breaking up. You're breaking up. <laughs> I'm whole, so I can't be broken. It's long. All right. So, am I? Y'all got? Y'all got to let me know what's up. Is, is, am I good? Are we good? Connection? Is it still breaking up? How's it? How's it going? Are we good? Good. Okay. Well, this class is going to be on how to process the lien. And the, the perfect way to, the best way to, to effectuate that. So I'm just going to share my screen on the internet. Uh, this is going to be on a recorded line, so individuals will be able to watch this later as I am going to upload it onto my YouTube, my YouTube account. So please mute your phones, only unmute them when you're speaking. And try to be mindful and respectful of the individuals that are on this line because this is going to go specifically in how to complete the lean from start to finish. As long. So I'm going to mute all of your phone lines until, I, until I'm finished explaining. If you have a question, please raise your hand or type it in the text. Don't just kind of jump on and interrupt what we're going on. The lean that we're going to process is based on the the uh, information that we received from um, from light. Light gave us. So please use the comment section um, of the messaging to ask a question. Um, and if you are on the cell phone and you have to ask a question, please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. Islam. Okay. Now, the information that I received was from Facebook, and it was in re reference to a post that Light had put up. And I said, because at first I was like, well, we should do the class based on an actual lean to process. Uh, so that is why I, um, it just came to me like, okay, what lean are we going to work on? So she gave me a lean, and the lean that we're going to work on is going to be the... <coughs> Office of Rural Development, which is a corporation under the United States Department of Agriculture. This is in regards to farming. This is in regards to food. Islam. Um, I did a little bit of information, a little bit of research on it because it, at first it was the Farmers uh, Home Administration. And when I start my research more, I always start with uh, finding out a little bit of information about the company. Um, sometimes websites will have a history, and it's always good to go to the About tab onto that website, but I'm going to first open up the actual affidavit, which is affidavit MACN-A006, so it's MACN-A006, and that is the, the, that is the affidavit to complete the lien. Let me open it up just so we're all on the same page. And I'm going to open up the template. And it's going to be number six. So while that's opening, I'm going to go to the internet and open up the web browser so I can put in. Farmer, so it started with the Farmer Farm Security Administration. And I don't want to go into too much history, but on the website it was talking about um, this pro this this pro okay, I'm just gonna read it while all of the all of the uh, websites open up. I'm gonna read the 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 link the post that Light put on Facebook earlier today. I'm just gonna go to Facebook and see if I can just pull it up so we all see what I'm seeing. And what started me to pick the corporation that I picked to do this tutorial lean class on is live. Okay. 
things take too long to load, I usually fill the air. <laughs> so until that opens up to what I'm looking for, let me go to light. Okay. And I'm only looking at opening it up because I want you to see what sparked this particularly. And you know, they're going to slow me down because they want to slow me down, but okay. The post, I'm going to start reading until it uploads onto this page. The real war. The real war. For those who think that recording of our affidavits, links, and illegal titles on the public record doesn't mean anything, you will not know, I mean, you will know now that it is the actual war, not the guns, and we have already won by status in active instruct demonstrations. The real war happens right where we know it does on paper and now they admit it. We know that, okay, as you read this, think lots of filings of documents and fiat. At the same time, think lots of recording of affidavits and lodial titles back to us in the more American gold standard. We know that the Mississippi is the Nile River, so now we know what happened to the land and resources our ancestors had in their possession. Ownership never left us, physical position, possession did, and that was by our consent not to stay. Unify and learn like we are doing so today. Here is the, here is the administration of the colonizers. Okay, so now I'm finally on the page and I can kind of go to the page and read it versus read. Okay, it's going to still act like it's going to take a long time. A war, waged, a war waged by deed of title has dispossessed 98% of black, I quote, black, Moors, agricultural landowners in America. So I'm going to go to here where it says that right here. They have lost 12 million acres over the past century. But even that statement falsely confines the losses to long ago history. In fact, the losses mostly occurred while living memory, while in living, within living memory from the 1950s onward. Today, except for a handful of farmers, like the Scots, who have been able to keep or get back some land, black people, Moors denationalized in the most positive and productive corner of the Deep South own almost nothing of the bounty under their feet because of how they identify. The following need to be lean. Atlantic.com for calling us black and calling former Christian colonizing Albion's white. Teachers Insurance and Immunity Association, Hancock Agricultural Investment Group, the Real Estate Trust Farms Partners, Ag Agrivest, a subsidiary of Swiss Bank UBS, Washington County, Mississippi, Tunica County, Mississippi, Holmes County, Mississippi, Joe's Brooks, the former president of the Emergency Land Fund, Census of Agriculture, Dania Francis at the University of Massachusetts, and Derrick Hamilton at Ohio State, Franklin D. Roosevelt, the Farmer Security Administration, an agency within the Department of Agriculture, and any other frauds fraud mentioned in this article who will do the link. So I'm giving you a little bit of background as to why I chose uh, farmers. I started with Farm Security Administration. I want to go into detail about everything else because this call and this platform is supposed to be specifically about how to complete and get the information to process the liens. Okay? So I have the lien document open right here, and I'm going to increase it to fit the page. So this is the document you can download, which is reference in the, in the um, footnote of the document. So I'm going to tell you that the doc with the name of the document in the footnote is actually let me rephrase this one. Let me call it with you. Give me a second. <clears throat> and I use R with the X's because I want you to know you got to put your record number here. But this is affidavit 006. Okay. All right. And it's the affidavit universal. Let me take of out because of is a neutralizing statement. All right. So in the, in the footnote of every every affidavit, and this is going to assist you more in keeping track of what you're doing. 
The reasons why you give it a record number is so you can keep track of it. And every affidavit you, 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 you process, even if you don't get a record number from us, you should be having some internal um, numbering system within your own bookkeeping to keep track of what you're doing. Okay, I have a document which I'm going to open just for um, reference sake so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so while that's opening, okay, let me see. So while that's opening, let's go back here. So as you see, the document, as you start doing your lean, you're going to update certain information on the lean. And I'm going to, we're going to walk through this class. And even if you don't stay the whole entire time, realize that this is going to be a tutorial. It's going to be uploaded on the YouTube page for you to, um, for you to reference when you're completing your leans, okay? So don't think that if you have to leave that you're going to miss something. It's going to be here for you, okay? So this document right here is the uh, Moorish American Continent document recording the Northeast region. And this is where I keep track of all the documents, recordings, and affidavits that I process um, going forward. So here, we're going to give this a document number because we're going to do the Farmers Association. So let's go back to here. So it's the Farmers Securities Association. But I know ultimately, based on a little bit of research that I did before this class, I started with Wikipedia. So I put Farmer Security Administration, and then I went down here for Farmer Security Administration. So Wikipedia usually is a start. It's only a start to get the information to start doing the research on the companies and the corporations. And I'm going to read this little bit of information because it's going to show you how Farmers Security Administration is a, a subsidiary company under the United States Department of Agriculture. And I know that because of a little bit of research I've done. But even though Farmer Security Administration is no longer active, it's now functioning as as we're going to read lower, it's going to tell you. It's actually now functioning at one point it was functioning as the Farmers Home Association, which shows you here, superseding Farmers Association. So it started as the Farmers Security Administration. It was formed in 1937. Before that, it was the Settlement Administration, and it was under the Federal Emergency Relief Administration. That was dissolved in 1946, and, and then it turned into the Farmers Association, Home Association. I don't want to read all of this because I don't want to, I want to get to the nuts and the bolts of completing an affidavit, I mean, a, a, a lien. So now when we go to the Farmers Home Association, within the body of that little bit of paragraph, it's going to let you know who this corporation is and what sanctions its, its activities. So the Farmers Home Association, the FMHA, is a former U.S. government agency which was established in, in August 1946 to replace the Farm Security Administration. It superseded, it superseded the Settlement Administration under, during the Depression and operations until 2006. So it's letting you know it was terminated in 2006. FMHA mission and programs involved extending credit for agricultural and rural development. Direct and guaranteed cre credit went to individual farmers, low-income families, seniors, and rural areas. Now here we go with the hypothecation. This is how we lost everything. Loans were authorized for homing, farm improvement, water systems, and emergency relief. FMHA also gave loans and grants for rural development. Why did they? Why did rural people need need development and grants? They didn't need it. They owned the land, but they but they but they dissolved that ownership and authority and the and the ability to use their own resources because they were operating outside of themselves. So that's why they needed these programs because they were no longer functioning as lawful human beings. They were product of someone else. The program resulted in increased so-called African-American land ownership, which they never owned anything. This program was only established and created to get, this, to get the signatures of the Asiatics so they can bond them and administer their estate as sovereigns. So they acquiesced their sovereign capacity to a corporation in order for a benefit that they never received because they took everything from them. 
South, for instance, black owners increased in numbers of Holmes County, Mississippi during the 1940s and in 1960s there were still over 800 black landowners in the county which held over 50 percent of land ownership. When we talk about black people, we talk about people who are outside of themselves. The nation's all uh, social engineering to get you to think that you're going to own something by getting assistance and asking for assistance from this Farmers Home Administration. So between 1947 and 1994, the FMHA expanded the availability of credit in the size of loans. It later, in later years, the, FA, the FMAH extended credit to individuals and communities for non-farm use. And in 1994, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which was organized in functions of, in functions of F, F, mm, FMHA were transported, transferred to the Farm Security Agency. So now they're saying the Farm Home Administration is now functioning as the Farm Service Agency. And in, and in 2006, that particular agency was fully terminated. Its housing and community programs were transferred to the newly formed USDA Rural Development. And we know USDA stands for United States Department of Agricultural Rural Development. So when I did a little bit more research, it pretty much lets you know that all these are arms of the United States Department of Agriculture, which is put in place to hypothecate everything that you own under their platform and, and to administer it as the sovereigns because our people um, are uh, choose to identify as a non So I'm going to go with, with that, okay? So we went from, we went from farmers, uh, <laughs> What was the first one? So this is how you know what the company is today because even though they might talk about their this, 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 and that, we know that the true hypothecator is the United States Department of Agriculture. And that's the department, that's the corporation we have to focus on. And all these other ones are arms or subsidiary corporations established to continue the fraud and the displacement of the, um, the land. Through what? What do they do it through? Loans and improvement in housing programs. And all of these things, we did what? How did we allow that to happen? By giving them, by signing an application, therefore giving them your sovereignty, as well as in being induced to fraud by, so by signing as a nom de guerre. So you've, you've abandoned and, and waived all of your sovereignty, not only by, at, by, by, by signing in a name that is not yours in, an, in, in, in a status, but also by um, signing an application. So, you took, so they took on your sovereignty. Your, you, you've identified and, and gave them jurisdiction of your body and persons and land. And now they're they're hypothecating and stealing it from you. And these are all deceptive practices that they do all over the land that give them the authority only by your admission. They would never be able to do this without your cooperation. So they hypothecate because you abandon it. You committed the sin first. Islam. So we started off with the, the, the Farmers Service Administration, and we went over to the Farmers Home Administration, and then it moved over to the Farmers Service Agency, and they're all um, uh, subdivision corporations of the United States Department of Agriculture. So that is the corporation we're going to now do this lean on. But you have to do this little bit of <laughs> now you have to do this little bit of research just to find out what's going on. And it didn't and it doesn't take a long period of time because Wikipedia gives you just the base. So then you take that base and then you go over to the United States Department of Agriculture. And where are all corporations um registered? All, no matter if they're on this landmass or not. Y'all can put those comments in the text as opposed to unmuting your phone. So, Washington, D.C. Okay. Washington, D.C. So I'm going to put in Washington, D.C., and then I'm going to go to my trusty, dusty <laughs> website, which is what? The D and B. And knowing what the D and B stands for is the Dunes and Bradstreet. And the Dunes and Bradstreet gonna let you know what it is 
what it's for. And the reality is because you're going to the Dunes and Bradstreet to look up corporations, you know that they're corporations because it's on the Dunes and Bradstreet website. It wouldn't be there if it wasn't registered through the District of Columbia as property of the United States Service Corporation Company. Islam, and we can find this out if you wanted to, to by, by researching this website, but we want to stay exactly where we are. So I'm going to put, well, what the hell? I didn't tell you to do anything. Islam. So now I'm going to put the corporation, United States. Department of Agriculture. And does anybody know what agriculture is? Can somebody go to the, because um, they say agriculture, agriculture. So we're going to go to DC and we're going to search for the web, for the, for the, for the corporation. And does anybody know why the Department of Agriculture is on the Duns and Bradstreet website? If this is government, why would government be registered as a corporation? And people miss this fact, right? So now we went to the Duns and Bradstreet, which is the www.dandv.com. And we put the uh, United States Department of Agriculture and the headquarters we know because all corporations start in D.C., Washington, because that's where they're supposed to be at all. So all their headquarters should be in Washington, D.C., because that's the only place that they were supposed to be. They weren't supposed to be all of our, <clears throat> all of our land mass, human trafficking, the Aboriginal indigenous. So as we can see through the website, the United States Department of Agriculture is located at 1400 Independence Avenue, Southwest Washington, D.C. And it gives you the information and it tells you the headquarters is right there. So that's the start of us drafting our affidavit. So now we have the information and we're going to go to the affidavit. And here I would normally put, well, let me go to my document. So I'm going to start here, put in my next record number, which is 430. The date that I'm drafting this document is today. And I'm going to put all my information. I love the copy and paste because I'm not a duplication of efforts. It lets you do things a lot easier and a lot quicker. And then I go here and rename my document with its corresponding record number. So that's 430. And we go down, copy and paste it in. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And then as soon as we, wait a minute, let me do this, y'all. Hold on a second. This is how I store all my liens. Then you save the file outside of the master. And whoever just unmuted their phone, please remute your phone, please. So now I'm ready to start my lien. At least with now I know who I'm leaning. Oh goodness. So let's go up to the top. Now let's change the corporation name. Everything highlighted in red you have to change, okay? The more you do these, the easier it will be. 
Okay. Always put brackets in the end and the beginning. All right. Now we have the corporation. We got to put the mailing location in here, the address of the corporation, which is 1400. Is it independent? Independence, that's funny. Independence. Independence Ave. Independence Avenue. It's hard to read when you're writing in all caps. Does anybody know why we're writing in all caps? <laughs> I know I told y'all not to say nothing. <laughs> but you can put it in the chat. Two and two fifty. Put the phone number here. Thirty-six, thirty-one, and you have all that information. Okay. And then after you make all the adjustments to everything, you change the cut. You change it because now you know you have the information in there, and there's no need for it. I always take the bold out to be that way. And then as you're doing documents, always save as you're doing it in case your system wants to play with you and go down. We have the corporation. The United States Department of Agriculture is the corporation. Now we're going to go, and we validated that from here. So now we're going to go to the actual USDA uh, website. It's a .gov, but that's a, a mispresentment because it doesn't represent any government. It's a corporation. And we know it doesn't represent any government, and it's a corporation. Why? Because we just looked it up on the Dunes and Bride Street, and it shouldn't be there. Islam? And, and, and if we were to go down here to Wikipedia, it would give you all sorts of information as to how much so-called credit we're transferring to them through our applications for loans. So when, I'll read just this little bit of section. The United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, also known as Agriculture Department in the United States Federal uh, Executive Department, responsible for developing and exercising federal laws relating to farming, forestry, and food. It aims to meet the needs of farmers and ranchers, promote agricultural trade and production, work to access food safety, protect natural resources, foster rural communities, and end hunger in the United States and internationally. Approximately 80% of the USDA's $141 billion budget goes to the Food Administration Services. Okay, but we know that budget means all of the more undeclared or unnaturalized who went to this particular corporation and gave them credit by filling out an application under those uh, mispresentments of uh, United States um, citizenry. Islam. So I just wanted to show you this again. They only got that through signatures of wars and them acquiescing their sovereignty for benefits and uh, privileges while this corporation is utilizing their resources to their detriment. And we already know that based on all the food and everything that's all contaminated, EMOs, all kinds of stuff. But they on their they, on their website they're saying that they're doing the opposite of what they're actually doing. So now that we've got the information for the mailing locations for the corporation, now we're going to look to see who's running it. And I usually, because sometimes they hide so much stuff on the website, um, you can start with about the USDA. But because I know how to kind of navigate, I usually go a little bit beyond all of this, who we are. Um, so we can go to the secretary. We can kind of go through all of these. Now they're saying the secretary of uh, agriculture is Sonny Dupree. Dupree? Dupree? I'm saying it all. I'm not butchering his name. All right. So they say that he is the secretary. But here, secretary of agriculture. So we know we have one debtor. So here I would put, where's his name? 
Sunny in all caps because he is. A, this is a war name. Purdue doing business as Secretary of Agriculture for the United oops, States Department. Oops, sorry. Of agriculture in bracket. That's how everybody's going to be listed out. They're Nam de Gear, so Sonny Purdue doing business as the Secretary of Agriculture for the United States Department of Agriculture. And that's how it's going to kind of go listing all the way down. So for me, I would do it this way. Uh, and go here. I would be like leadership team because they hide it of the United States Department of Agriculture. Sometimes you're going to get a win. Sometimes you're not, y'all. That's why it, it, it is a um, I do a little research. It's a little, it's a little research you got to do. So here is a senior leadership team of USDS, USDA. All right. Okay. And that is a link on that website we was just at, but they didn't make it obvious as to who is the leadership team, and it's bedded in links, but you got to find it. So I usually start my searches off at the website. If it's if it's not easily displayed, I call, I go do a search, and now it's telling you all the people that are the leadership team of the Department of of the United States Department of Agriculture. And look, they always got us at the beginning, y'all. But she probably don't know nothing, just so y'all know. And it's telling you that the chief financial officer is currently vacant. So it has the leadership team, and then sometimes it'll have board of directors. So now we're going to take this time to add those corporate people. Don't matter if they age yet or nothing. Doing business as deputy chief what? financial. And keep in mind, they put our people up at the top because they know darn well they're not supposed to be there. They're not supposed to be in any of these uh, positions. They're not supposed to be there. And when we started waking up, they started putting a lot of our people in these positions in order to uh, hide from persecution. So they put us in front of to fight us ourselves. So that's kind of the disunity piece because if you'd have probably looked at that Department of Agriculture probably five years ago, it would have been all Albion listed on that website. Now, Tangie, you said this is what Dr. King was explaining in a speech about the Rockefellers who started these programs and how they own us, how they owe us a check because the one they gave us bounced. <laughs> and speaking in, well, it's not even that. It's, they, they never gave us a check because we should never have been asking for a check by signing in the Mount of the Gears. So we was in dishonor and breach first. And when King was around, his responsibility wasn't to align us into a, a um, a burning building. It was for it's for us to establish our independence outside of that uh, platform that was only created to hypothecate us. So Stanley, so far is it fun, y'all? <laughs> y'all have questions while I'm pull, pulling these names down. Um, y'all can definitely unmute yourselves and ask the question while I'm getting this information before we move to the next phase. Islam Sharon, this is um. Empress Tanji. So um, I started to investigate the counties. I was, you know, going to see some property, and so in a lot of so these counties, they they have, they um, have land, land banks, banks. Uh -huh. and and they are linked with these investing corporations, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's just so ridiculous how they segregated and just chopped up, you know, regions 
you know, and they tell you how their whole history, the time frame of when they come here, they tell you the indigenous people, because they have the historical societies, you know, but mm-hmm. they have, um, what do they call hamlets, towns, uh, provinces, uh, cities, and they're all working off of, of, of course, executive, and then maybe manager, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, so, but they have these land banks, like, who told you you can have land banks, you know, and that comes off, because you remember the Rockefellers, they started these agricultural programs, and I was looking for the documents so I could send it to you, at the time, that's what they were implementing, and Dr. King was in his speech was saying like, you know, he understood that they did us dirty, you know, and they owe us a, a big time check because, you know, they're, they're still in the land, you know. So, yeah, but the crazy part about it is they wouldn't even be able to steal the land if we wasn't giving it to them I by, know. Being, by being outside of ourselves. Like we mm-hmm. gave it to them. If you're not going to be the sovereign, you're going to get you're you're signing over your sovereign uh, capacity over to someone who is not sovereign. So look at it in in the sense that whenever you file any application, you're saying that I cannot administer my own affairs, and mm-hmm. then you're signing as a mm-hmm. fraud uh, as a fraudulent individual. So they're taking that application that you signed under that war name, so you breached first, so you mm-hmm. can't even talk about how they breached because you sit here signing another man's name. Yeah. And then they just place bonds on you to 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 uh because they can because you have nothing to defend yourself outside of that especially since you want to operate as a non mm-hmm. Yeah. So even though they're inducing you to fraud, <laughs> you're you're, you're still participating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're participating in. yeah, and that's why we got kicked in our butt for so long. <laughs> exactly. But like, okay, if you don't want to be yourself. You want me beating your beat, beating your butt. <laughs> That's really what we're saying when we don't operate operate in our own sovereignty and ask somebody else to do things for us. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what we're doing today, asking other corporations to do things for us. And then, like, look, right. they have a whole organizational chart. So they have an organizational chart. But you see, like, a lot of the... um. Information and I see there's a board of directors because there's usually a board of directors that tell them what to do. This, these individuals listed out here are the people who are org- who are manning and, and, and operating the corporation, but who owns it is the board of directors. Now let's see if the uh, what's this called United the Department of Ag- Oops Department of Ag- oh. Board. Oh, board of let's see. Do you see that? You see where I had to go, right? You see the website did not tell you anything, right? And how if you sit here and navigate that website, you'll sit here and be ready to beat yourself up. And now we have the board of directors. But when you were in the other website, you couldn't find any of this information. It was not easily accessible. Mm-hmm. You put it on another site. So now we have all these names. See all that? We got about twelve additional names to put on this on this um this this link. And these are the board of directors. Okay? And I'll add these, but I don't want I mean if we want to plug the air up, so in regards to other questions that you might have, like definitely bring it up so I can add these these individuals to this document. And this is the fun part of doing a link when you can find it. So don't always just be navigating the site for three hours trying to find stuff when it's hidden. And I'm just going to put them doing business as board members of the United States Department of Agriculture. Okay. So this is going to be easy. So if there's any other questions, please ask them while I fill this in. Because this this um, meeting is about how to do a lean. Start to finish. Edmund Faulkner. Is it Faulkner? Doing business as board member of the United States Department of Agriculture. And here I'm copying and placing it so it's not so laboring. Governed. Canon.
No questions? I mean, anybody be having questions on text messages, but I guess when we all be in the in the here, then y'all ain't got nothing to say. I think that's funny. Question? No questions? Anybody doing something while they're working? Uh, this is Ishmael Bay. This one is my name. Okay, um, today I had called over to um, DC, D's of Records, to speak to someone about the, the lean I recorded. And the young lady that I spoke to, she was very insistent that they were not going to record the, the liens because they didn't have a fee attached to it. And I explained to her it wasn't a, there was no need for uh, a fee, but she's very insistent that there has to be a, a fee and that they were not going to record uh, my lien. And she wanted to give me a, someone else to speak with, but I told her I'll call back most likely tomorrow to speak to a supervisor. Um, what would you say about that? Uh, it's the law. You tell me what the law what the law says. Well, I did uh, based on what was in the document, and she was very, very insistent that. What's the law? I don't care what she was doing, but what's the law? That once they receive, once we send them um, certified return receipt, is acknowledged that they have accepted it. Clerk to file. Clerk is the file, 18 U.S.C. subsection 2071. Can somebody look that up right now and post and, and post it in the text message? Then we'll talk about it once you guys have it up there. Because you have to realize nobody's going to babysit you into nationality, or babe, or, and also also realize that they don't want to give you back your stuff. So you're asking them to help you give you back your stuff. They don't want to give you back your stuff. They're not going to be cooperative to you if that's what you're looking for. They've been human trafficking you. They've been miseducating you. And they've been um, lying to you. So do you think just off on the off chance she's lying to you as well as what do you think Elaine really is? What does it represent to you? Do you know what it really is? Do you know well, what's going to lead? A lead is, is the indication of a debt, an obligation um, to the creditor, which what's I definitely the obligation? understand. What's the obligation? Well, the obligation is replacing liens on any personal or real property that the debtor may have. And, who's, and why would we place the lien on them? Why are we going liens? How about that? Let's start there. Why? Because that is a means for giving um, what we're doing teeth and to recover what belongs to us. I understand that principle, but the thing that they kept insisting is that we're not going to record it. So my thing is, if I do a lien against, let's say, Walmart, and Walmart's still able to do business, how can I use that lien that I filed, even though I got the return receipt certified to my advantage so that it, it sticks um, as, as a consequence of not doing what they're supposed to do? I yield the floor. Can somebody clarify what he was saying, please? Come on, Demetrius, Tangie, Fatima. Islam, brother, can you repeat what you stated, please? Okay. Okay, I made it. I've contacted the rec, uh, deeds of records of in D.C., Spoke to someone at their office, um, advised that I put a lien in, gave them the information. They advised that unless I had supplied them with fees, they were not going to record the document. Um, and she was very insistent that they were not going to record any of the document. So Who you were talking to, by the way? I don't mm -hmm. recall that, but I'm calling back tomorrow to speak to a supervisor and write all that up. But I figured that they would, when I called, they would have all the information available. But at that point, they were like, no, we don't have it, but I know what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. And we're not recording mm -hmm. the document. By admission, if they have it. <laughs> right. They, mm -hmm. oh, they acknowledge that they have the document, yes. Exactly. So they're acknowledging they had it and they recorded it. And they sent it back to you. Right. They then you so much acknowledgement as to them receiving your document. Mm -hmm. And also realize your liens are not corporate liens because you're not a corporation. So why would it be on a website where corporations mm -hmm. profit? 
they don't have any judicial capacity to make even or discern what should be filed or not. Their job no. is just to do it. The law. And mm -hmm. it's the posted clerk is to file, 18 U.S.C. subsection 2076. Whoever being a clerk of a district court of the United States willfully refuses or neglects to make a forward any report, certificate, statement, or documents as required by law shall be fined under this title or imprisoned no more than one year or both. Rule mm -hmm. 25, filing and service. Clerks refuse no documents. The clerk must not refuse to accept the filing any paperwork presented for that purpose solely because it is not a presented in proper form as required by these laws or any other local practices. Mm -hmm. So they cannot, de they cannot deny you filing your report for any reason, especially for fiat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Also utilize 2076. That's what I was talking. 2076. That's what I read. And 2071. 2071, 2071 and 2076. They cannot deny. They cannot deny you filing anything. Mm -hmm. And then, and then utilizing. Demanding that you pay them fiat causes you to commit a, a, a fraudulent crime right. against yourself if you're not supposed to be using the fiat to give to them to record because they belong, the counties belong to us and they mm -hmm. have to file them. That's why they were created so that people can put their information on the public record. Mm -hmm. Do you understand, Noble? Is he here? Islam, brother, I understand. Not, I said overstand. Don't understand me, overstand. Overstand. Sit for All right. So what when they it? tell you that they're not, they're not going to file them, they've already committed a crime because they already accepted the document. Mm -hmm. So that's the crime for not doing their fiduciary duty. They, once they accept that document, and you get that green card back, that means they have accepted it, they have it, it they've even scanned it, even if they don't, mm -hmm. even if they mm -hmm. don't send it back to you, because they're really not going to send it back to you. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So it's already been filed, but they're not going to put it on the public record for you to see that it's been filed because you're not uh, commercial. Mm -hmm. You're not doing commercial business with them. Remember, they were here, they're here to do commercial business. And also remember that when you sign an application, you're telling them what to do. And the only reason they were able to even create all of the corporations mm -hmm. that they created was because they had to first start with your signature. Mm -hmm. So why would you think or even presume or even be convinced based on their admission that as soon as you write a document and you even put it on a public platform that they don't have to do what you say. You're witnessing right now millions of corporations being dissolved because mm -hmm. of the liens working. Because the liens is like a, 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 corporate equi the, a corporate equivalent is an application. But instead of you asking for something as a subject, you're commanding it as a sovereign. You just Islam, Sharon. Islam. Would you check your email, please? I just sent you two um, documents that might be of some interest that one of our consuls in Texas got sent back to them. But they actually put something in writing, so take a look at them if you would. You don't want to talk about it um, instead of just, uh, you know... Huh? No, I wanted to send them to you, and you know, because it's one of the things that you can use in what you're doing. I've talked with them already about it. My thing, I told them, look, you're sending your liens there. You don't care as long as you have delivered it and you have acknowledgement that they got it. That is all you want to do. As long as you don't be bothered with anything else, Nothing. they can do. They can burn them, throw them away, toss them, do whatever. You filed it, and you have your record, and you have your copy of it. And that's why you put it also on the public platform, because they're looking to us. I'm not talking about the Albions, because the Albions are trying to still skirt us. But the, right. 
the international community <laughs> is looking to us for directives. So if we say a corporation's been lean, they no longer can do business through them. Right. They stop doing business through them. Literally. Exactly. And that's where the public oh. notifications outside of that platform is also. You're just telling them just to put the, put it on their record so they can stop doing business if they want to continue to do business. This is the, this is the requirements. Because the purpose of us even doing the lean is to say, oh, you're outside of alignment. I've corrected my status. Now it's time for you to correct yours. And I'm not going to lift this, this lean until you make those corrections. So if you don't make those corrections, your company ceases to, to exist, and you yourself are a company. So even if you try to liquidate that company, your so-called tags, because you tagged all your people just like you tagged all my people with the Social Security number, the EIN number, it goes wherever you go. So now, not only was that corporation credit score go down, your nom de guerre, which is also a, corp uh, a corporation, has also went down. So you're not going to be able to do business unless that lane's lifted because it goes wherever you go. So you don't have to realize they created the system to, to monitor us, but in that same system, they monitored themselves and created a, created a trail for us to seek and destroy. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Islam, Islam, can I interject? Of course. You look up Ken Hallow B. Dome's administration. Can you post it in the okay. channel? I, I, I can't post it because I can't I do it right now. I, I, uh, Ken Hallow B. Dome's administration tells you the United States was as a corporation. The corporation can only deal with other corporations. They have no relationship or parity with the real. Who is the real? The real natural person. They have no parity nor relationship with the real. So they are not going to deal with you unless you give them consent to keep you in the store as a corporation. So you have to understand they're not, they're not playing. You have to play against them with their own rules. Yep. And knowing that, and knowing that the United States is a federal corporation at Title 28, Section 3002, Subsection 15A, then you already know you're dealing with corporation. You're not dealing with natural beings, although natural people are working in these entities, but they're still corporations because they too are straw men. And they're induced to fraud as well. Islam. Islam. Islam, but it's one of the reasons why people have to know who they are and stop following what they think or been told they are. Um, because most of the problems, 99% of the problems our people get into is because they go, like you said, they go looking for permission from those who are serving them. As well as validation. Yeah, they flip themselves and make themselves the uh, the chattel every darn time. Wow. You know, and and all we have to do is act in our act in our proper person, and you know, papers don't mean a darn thing if you don't know how to handle yourself. It's long. So and you gotta know say. that everything you write, just like uh, uh, Taj Tariq Bay said in a video. They could not have controlled the world without first controlling us or getting yes. us to agree. We had to agree to be yes. United States citizens, y'all. And in that agreement, those signatures they use to say, oh, they're giving us their sovereignty. And, and they're happy about it, but they ain't going down to you. <laughs> but they're going to go and take that credit and create all types of organizations and companies, but those organizations and companies are still tied to the law. So we got to know that we don't need them to accept. We don't need them to acknowledge. We don't need them to uh, record, for real, for real. Because once we spell it, meaning once we write, once I finish this affidavit, I, actually right now we're putting energy onto this spell, onto this document, onto this affidavit. And once we sign it and seal it, whether we send it out or not, it's already, it's already activated. Exactly. Because, because it's, everything starts in the mind. Exactly. And once the mind changes, everything else follows through. Because if the mind didn't change, you wouldn't have ever been able to print the document nor sign it and send it. 
Yep. And y'all need to be y'all need to be really connected, not with the manifested man, but the spirit within you that's actually making this work, making this happen. It's Islam. 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 Also, if you look at the Tao, the Tao is falling. They are falling. They've been falling for the past three days. It fell seven hundred points yesterday, and will pop and will. It's heading for a major crash because uh, the the bricks and all the others are saying, "Keep your stuff. We're not doing business with it." And guess what? They also and actually and that's and that's um, what am I saying? That's uh, translated to me, and I can't use this stuff no more because the Moors just activated the gold standard, and now we got to do business through them. Right, so I'm right. not messing. With all your all your paper is literally paper at this point because the Moors just put the gold standard on, and we're waiting for our damn orders from them so we can continue to do business, which we're working on right now. So when we talk about get your grid done, because the last tier of the grid is living alone off of your estate and not letting the vampires through corporations and applications hypothecate. You, you got to get it done because it's over. And this is what this class is all about, getting the, getting the lean process to continue the fall of Rome. But Rome's already on the ground in, 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 uh, in pieces. Already. Islam, Shinrin. Islam. Islam. Is there, is there usually a dollar amount that's put into the lean document? All right, so as we go down, we, we're going to start talking about the lien because I actually put um, all of the essential individuals of the Department of Agricultural Corporation Company in here. So we have the, if you're looking at your screen, we have the leadership team, which is listed, and then we have the board of directors. But I'm interested to see that there's no actual um, Executive. So the highest person on here will be the Secretary of Agriculture, which is Sonny Purdue. So let's let's get let's continue with completing this document, and we're just going to do this one corporation, so we can keep uh, a little block of information in this, in this agri in this document down. So as I'm so now I have all of the uh, doing business as individuals on this document. Now I'm going to start to enter enter information into debtor number one. There's not going to be a debtor number two. Um, it's only going to be one debtor in this affidavit. And I'm going through, and I'm, I'm skipping over this specifically, but let's go over this. Now, where you see certified tracking here, that's where you would put the certified return receipt information if, you're, if you decide to send it certified mail. Now, we have new mailing processes that are coming up, so there's going to be things that alleviate use using fiat for sending it. Um, but if you wanted to put the tracking information, you would put it here. So let me start with one. I don't even have to because i got to go get more tracking documents, y'all. Um, so I'll just start with the certified return receipt document. So I'm going to put this information here that you get off the green slips, and everybody should know what those look like by now because you sent out your notices from the first tier. So, and then there would be the uh, return receipt number. So, for me, I don't send to here because I have the email address, and I don't send to here because I have the email address. The only certified mailing that I send out is to the Mayor uh, Muriel Browser in this location. So, this is the only one that I, I send out for the tracking number purposes only. But as you see, the email addresses are here also if you want to email. And we're going to go through the whole process because it's only supposed to be up until 5 o'clock in regards to that. So I'm going to start really talking, okay? So in this information, you would obviously put your information here. Since I'm going to leave. Why did that just change? Well, can you mute your phone because I'm hearing because I'm hearing. Why it's doing this, but it wants to do this right now. So I'm entering this information so we can get down to the part where you had that question. All right, and then I unhighlight things once I make those changes. All 
sorry, go down. If I'm sharing on the if a que question on your address. You're putting Mailing the you're putting your address here for the consulate, correct? I'm putting my mailing location, but that's unique to me uh, because I use this mailing location. But you, if you wanted to put your mailing location, you would put it here, and if it's a P.O. box, you would put that here. Oh, so you would, would it be best to put the P.O. box or the physical down south? You can choose whichever one you want. It don't matter. Okay. I wouldn't put my physical domicile anywhere because we got to get to the point where people don't easily have access to us by us giving them all our information as to where we are. That's kind of part of the issue because we all, under the UD, under the United States Postal Service, uh, allowed to have those addresses so everybody could find us when they wanted to hypothecate still us by right. the by the presentments that they were sending in the mail. So I, I I implore everybody to stop updating stuff in the USPS. Uh, platform because the only individuals that's supposed to be updating their so-called addresses are corporations. We were never supposed to be using that. Islam. Islam. So your information will be here, and because you're all part of the Morris Consulate uh, or the Morris National Republic Federal Government, you can add that as well. But if you are, let's say, not an affiliated for whatever reason, you put your information here. All your personal, your per, your specific information as a Morris American National, because this is can be used by any nation, any state of sovereignty in the Morris. Islam. Islam. Be advised that. Be advised. And be advised that your mailing location does not mean that you domiciled it. That's why they say mailing location. That's just a place where you pick up mail. That doesn't Islam. necessarily mean you domiciled there. Islam? Islam. Correct, because Islam. you domicile in your body. That's the only place you domicile, in your body. Islam. So, okay, so the sin acknowledgement too, you can put any, like I said, you can put anything in here. It doesn't necessarily have to be our information, it can be any information of any other North American national under the sin acknowledgement. But my, my information is in there, but if you want to put anybody's information in there, make the change. Islam? Uh, Islam. I also see on here for the mail-in, um, is this only because it says corp corporate territory, corporate republic, ta uh, republic zip exempt? Does, does, that doesn't mean for my mail-in, correct? I would have to put my, excuse me? Is this Brandy? Is this, this Sharon's name? This is Marilyn. Oh, man, okay. You're going to put all your personal, if, oh, not personal, I'm sorry, all your billing information here. Now, zip exempt, you don't even need to put the zip information in there because that's corporate in, in its entirety. So that's why we have the brackets because that information is only for um, pointing to specific locations because until you get the grids adjusted for private or not for a lodial uh, Morrison sovereignty. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, not exactly. All right, so what's the question again? The question is, when I put my mailing, my P.O. box here, I see yeah. where on here it's got zip, exempt, but this is for Pennsylvania Republic. Do I not put my um, zip on my mailing? It's not, it's not your zip. No, that's not, no, you wouldn't put it there. You would put zip exempt. Uh, zip exempt. Yes. All right, Islam. Uh, Islam. The, zip, the zip was unnecessary. That's corporate in nature, and that's how they had their numbering system. They can pull up you based on the 444 East Township Line Road in the Havertown, Pennsylvania. The zip is unnecessary. And then you can Islam. use latitude and longitude as well. Islam? Islam, excuse me. I'm finding that what's happening, um, a lot of mailing that's been sent to me, they put zip exempt on it. And the mail is either delayed or it's marked out the where zip exempt is put. They run a line through it and they put a zip on it. And, and that's I believe that is because some of those people don't know how you know handle it without the zip or how they're filing. 
So uh, would, I believe it would be better to put the zip and put it in kill brackets. Yeah, so it's, it's because there, it's because of their it. it's because of their yeah. the platform the way they teach their individuals because they they put their so called zip up there first and then they look for a location in their system because they're sitting here still trying to hold you as a corporation. So they're doing that on purpose. Yes. And because the yeah, zip is associated with and because the zip is associated with a specific post office location, they put it there. So they've created a process over top of that corporate piece and created a, 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 a way of handling it internally, whereas though they haven't loyalized it, whereas though you put Pennsylvania have a town, and that system is corporate in its, in its entirety. So yeah, sometimes it's best to put the zip there, but it's unnecessary because they, they have ways of looking it up without it. They, it's just easier for them to do it with it. Yeah. Well, when it's coming to the post office box, if you put the zip with the kill brackets, it helps to yes. get your mail on time. Because I've had mail delayed two and three weeks because of that. Yeah. For over saying, they, a lot of those employees do not know the process of tax per queue or do not know that the zip exempt. They, they don't know this. Because a lot of them don't even know about the Universal Postal Union. Because I've spoken to them. And they're like, what are you talking about? Most of them. Yeah, correct. All right, so you have to understand the the indoctrination that they are getting in those service corporations called the Postal Service or the Post Office. They're not teaching them right. They're teaching them always to be having commerce, conduct to conduct commerce. They're not teaching them the right way because I've had them, a few of them say, well, can I do this? I say, yeah, you can, but you have to be in your, your, your natural person. And I know one person who left the post office because they were tired of that BS. So a, a majority of them don't know about what the truth is about the UPU and who started the post roads. They think it all started here, by here, when it was not so. Islam, I hear. You also got to realize, just like the other day when I was at the Postal Service and uh, I was returning some stuff to be mailed because it was returned to me for insufficient addresses, right? So one of the things I said was, yeah, put these, she was like, oh, these are postage. She was like, oh, you got to repay for postage. I was like, no, I don't because that never made it to the destination that it was supposed to make it to. So I'm not repaying for something when it didn't get where it was supposed to be. And then she said, well, I can't give you these back with these on it. I have to take them off. I was like, well, that's male tampering and that's a federal offense and there will be inducement to fraud and I will have to lean you and your corporation if you do that. And then the supervisor came out and neither one of them could really stand on law because they don't know the federal rules of rules that they are held to as a corporation under the federal under un, under federal law. And she was like, well, I've been here for 19 years. I'm like, yeah, but a lot of people be in places for a long time holding up to processes and they don't even know the laws they're violating, inducing themselves to fraud. And that was one of those packages was the package that was coming to you, uh, Demetrius, and it got to you two days later. So I know what I'm talking about, but at the same time, you're going to have to be confronted with these, these employees because they are grossly oh, uneducated in law. So I say that all to say, we got work to do more because they get these positions and they don't know what they're doing. And they're, they're left at that deficit on purpose to frustrate us when dealing with them. All right. It's long. And they're also told not to give their information out. So they will run from you because they don't want to give you their names. And just know, because they're all federal employees working under the federal corporation registered, all of their information is public knowledge because they're corporations. Know that. Because I did the lean on the United States Postal Service for Sharon Hill, and I got all 40-something employees from the federal pay website. Know how much they so-called get paid and everything. All right, so I'm doing section one. So we did all this information, we updated this, and now we're going to plug in the information that we, we, we organized above. So here is the first debtor. Okay, let me put her down here. So I'm just copying and pasting what's up in the to area and putting it down here. 
in the from I mean in the debtors area. So we're going to first start with the debtor, which is a corporation company, United States Department of Agriculture. So that's debtor number one under 1A, organization's name, in kill brackets, the United States Department of Agriculture. So uh, under the additional, I'm sorry, the additional names, initials that are a part of the name of the first debtor will be all of those people doing business as the United States Department of Agriculture. So now I'm going to add all of them in this section. And if I had two corporations that I wanted to do, what happened? If I had two corporations that I wanted to do, I would have another corporation listed under debtor number two. But for, for this demonstration, in this uh, video, we're going to do one debtor. So only debtor number one is going to be processed. Islam? Islam, so I just, Sharon, Sharon? Islam. Can I just add just one, one comment? comment. Oh, somebody in the speakers. speakers. Um, with Crap. With the kill brackets stuff, what the reason for kill brackets is because the people that are reading it are dead people. They can only read dead. So that's why the kill bracket works perfectly for any of the things that you want to use that you don't want to apply to you. It's long. Thank you for that. Sure. That uh, thank you. It's long. So right now I'm putting the mailing location or the corporate address down here at the bottom. So I'm just copying what was up top and placing it at the bottom. Okay, guys? So that's all I'm doing. And that's why I did the pre-information, finding all this stuff to process the lien. So under debtor number two, we don't need to put anything because we're only going one debtor. So, but it, like I said, if you had two debtors, for instance, if we did Walmart, Say we did the Walmart Corporation and we did the research. Fatima did that research earlier today. We could do debtor number one, which would be Walmart Incorporated, and debtor number two would be Sam's Club, which is a sub subdivision corporation of Walmart. So debtor number one would have been the parent company and debtor number two would be the subsidiary. Okay? So that would be a, an example of you having a debtor number one and a debtor number two. Is it wrong? So number three is where you put your information because you are the first party secured creditor. Islam, can you go through that uh, again? Say that again? Can you go through that again? Uh, my uh, line disconnected. Go through what again? The parent uh, corporation and the subsidiary example. Oh, okay. Give me one second. So, for instance, if you wanted to do two debtors, like for instance, if you did Walmart, a Walmart, the lien on Walmart, Walmart would have been debtor number one, and you would list, for instance, under, oops, under one A, you would list Walmart Incorporated here in the kill bracket. And then under additional, you would put all those so-called board of directors, leadership teams, executive, uh, or management team. They have those introverses, so you have to know which one, because they're going to tell you the leadership team, the board of directors, and these different things. I always, at the very least, put the board of directors if they have it, or the leadership team, or both. So once you do debtor number one, so like Walmart would be debtor number one, but his, the subsidiary company is Sam's Club. So Walmart would be debtor number one, and debtor number two would be Sam's Club. So I'll put Sam's Club here, and then all those individuals operating as CEO, board of directors, or leadership teams, or executive teams here. As, I'm sorry, here, as the additional names, initials that are part of the name of this debtor. And then the mailing location based on looking it up in the Duns and Bradstreet under the D District of Columbia headquarters because that's where they're all supposed to be. Islam? And then, debtor, and, then, and then section three is where you're putting your information as the first party creditor who is issuing this debt instrument. I mean, I'm sorry, who's issuing this lien? So you put your information there and then down here where you were asking how much to put in as the lien amount 
you, that's up to your discretion. We put a generic number in here, but you can up you can add add to that number or decrease that number. It's completely up to you. I leave it stationary for where it's at because it's in gold backed lawful currency and they're dealing with monopoly money. They're not dealing with actual money. They're dealing with credit. And it's based on you, the national. So this financing statement covers the following collateral. The collateral covered by this financing statement is the indebtedness of the debtor to the secure first party creditor in the sum certain amounts of which, which is stated here in gold backed lawful tender due for each parcel the debtor is occupying upon the land to which Sharon Tracy Del Bay and all Morse American nationals of the Morse National Republic Federal Government, the Morse American Consulate, and the Morse Divine and National Movement of the World are heirs to pursuant to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786 and 1836, and the American Mandate for the Land previously held in the United Nations Trustee System, 1946 in Geneva, Switzerland, and the Constitution for the United States, 1791, non pro tonk. This true bill is commerce. This true bill in commerce has been executed pursuant to the following universal commercial codes that govern the private secured first party creditor, which is you. Charges are also calculated pursuant to the fraud and other violations committed against the Moorish American Nationals at North America, as well as indebtedness for debt engaged into before in, before the said constitution and for occupying the land of the Moorish American Nationals. The said treaty is the attached Library of Congress certified publications entitled the Public Stats at Law of the United States of America, Volume 8, Volume 8, pages 100 through 105, certified September the 26, 1990, signed and sealed by Library of Congress, photo duplication service, acting chief Cheryl, Cheryl <laughs> and Barry on November the 8th, 2007. Charges are additionally calculated pursuant to all affidavits and writs and affidavits, statements of truth and law, admiralty, trade, and commerce filed by the Morris American Nationals where the above mentioned debtors have caused injury to the estate of the first secure party creditor at any and all times on the land pursuant to the said treaty. Proof of service of each affidavit and writ is attached. Creditor's notice against the liable parties is the judgment. Rest judicata. Stare decisive. Right of secure first party creditor. Additionally, this claim is filed pursuant to international commercial claims, aboriginal and imperial claims, antiquities claims this is a filing to encumber land property real estate and all commercial transactions by debtor all principals and agents also pursuant to UCC 9-607 collection and enforcement by secure person secure party UCC 9-203 attachment and enforceability of secure interest UCC 9-609 security parties rights to take possession after default all contracts with the United States Service Corporation Company are canceled effective September the 11th, 2018. The new contract with the Morris National Republic Federal Government for indebtedness are as follows. All debtors named above have current contracts with the Morris American Con with the Morris American Nationals at North America, which is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786, 1836, and the Constitution for the United States, 1791. And this UCC-1 financing statement uh, whose do document number is and that's the number above, which is that tracking, certified tracking number, or you could give it your own document number. You don't have to use the tracking number for its delivery, but you can. So if you have your own numbering system, you can use that numbering system. You do not have to use the certified tracking number. Or you can use this number right here, the MACNR-00000430 number. So it's up to your discretion, but I'm going to put that number here. Okay, and then the record number here, which I just created and filed and recorded there. Okay, and then the name of the corporation. Now, now this is just a pull and grab. You don't necessarily have to. You know, write all this stuff out. You got to learn. Control C is the copy. Control V is the paste. The more you do it, the more it'll be easy for you to do. And then this information goes here, which is Sunny doing business as the secretary. And then the United States Department of Agriculture is a corporation here.
So the terms of your new contract with the Moorish National Republic Federal Government, the Moorish American Consulate, and the Moorish American Nationals is that all Moorish American Nationals are to be respected as a secure first party creditors at all times and are now the new heirs to the United States Department of Agriculture and all of its intellectual property and holdings. Contract particulars are to be discussed as soon as this notification in is confirmed received by Sonny Perdue doing business as Secretary of Agriculture for the United States Department of Agriculture. The only flags that will fly at North America, Morocco are the Moorish National Moorish American flags, red with the five pointed green star and all US banner of Admiralty and Commerce are outlawed and are commanded to be removed immediately. All it's indigenous so it's so um, let me get down to the you go back down to up, which is, up yeah, which is add corporation name here, correct? Yep. And then it says um, contract particulars are to be discussed as soon as this notification is confirmed, received by. On here it says natural being here, doing business as president of corporation. And that's Sonny Perdue doing business as the Secretary of Agriculture for the United States Department of Agriculture. Natural being? What it's saying is that the United States Department of Agriculture is a corporation. Even Sonny Perdue is a corporation, but he is the natural being you have to pull outside of the corporate fiction, which is the United States Department of Agriculture, because that person doesn't exist. It's a corporation and exists on paper. Now, Sonny Perdue is a, is a natural being, but that's his nom de guerre. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. when, when Ty says, who is injuring you, the United States Department of Agriculture isn't injuring you because it only exists on paper, but Sonny Perdue exists in the flesh, but he's uh, operating as that nom de guerre. Gotcha. It's law. It's law. So that's how they've been getting it. It's like, the Department of Agriculture smacked me in my face. No, it was actually Sonny who physically did that. Islam. So Sonny hides behind that, that fiction. And because the people are ignorant to even think that fiction, fiction exists, you'll never be able to uh, effectuate a claim because that United States Department of Agriculture is a, is, is a, a plaintiff or a defendant in error because he doesn't exist. But Sonny Perdue does, <laughs> who's operating that corporation and injuring the people. Islam? Islam. Islam. Mm -hmm. All immigrants who do not pledge uh, sincere allegiance to the Moorish flag will be arrested, detained, and or deported. All who pledge allegiance to the Moorish National Republic Federal Government and the Moorish American flag will be made subjects and are mandated to protect and serve the Moorish American Nationals upon our land. The property with all allegiance is now the property of the Moorish National Republic Federal Government, the Moorish American Consulate, and the Moorish American National. Property is to be turned over to, and this is where you put your information in, which is why it's highlighted in red. I like to keep my appellation in red because that, to me, um, represents a living being. Islam, and then you add the corporation mm -hmm. there. Like I always like to do, copy and paste. I don't like to keep type. Did I do? I don't like to keep typing. So learn, control V for copy, control, I mean control C for copy, control V to paste. Islam. All right. Now he, okay, let's go. Did we, did we read all that? I don't know. Uh, okay. The property is to be turned over to Sharon Tracy Galbay with the keys and codes of all of the buildings no later than, and this is where you put the date that you want to put. I'll put the 21st because I like the 21st and it's about seven days later. Um, August 2019. <clears throat> the more the Morris National Republic federal government will begin using the property at that time. Anyone who obstructs, hinders, encumbers, speaks against, or resists the mandates of this affidavit will be seized up by the Grand Army by the Grand Army of the Republic, formerly known as the United States Military, and detained in jail. It's Go ahead. Sharon, how much time from this, from where you have the 4th of July, 2019, how much time should we give them? Give them what you want. It's up to you. You can give them 30 days. You can give them three days. You can give them 24 hours. You can give them what you want. I usually give seven days, maybe 30, depending. 
agriculture and food and food. I want you to, you to get get it together really fast because <laughs> that's uh, just... it, it, is this after is this after we file or before we file we put the date there that we want them to respond. We put the date we want them to respond. After so I, we put so that in. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. All right, we know where we're going to file this. When we know where we're going to file this, we can put the date in, seven days, 30 days, or whatever, correct? Yes. All right, it's fine. The Morse National for Public Federal Government and the Morse American Nat and the Morse American Nationals are the creditor and the United States Department of Agriculture are the debtors to the Morse. As with all property at Northwest America, at Northwest America, if, in, if at any time a Morse American National should send by mail, delivery, hand send, or state notification to the, re, to the residents of any foreigner, European, or immigrant stating that you are to vacate premises of any property at North America, along with providing a copy of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, 1786-1836, and a copy of the Moorish American Consulate Notice of Existence, you are to vacate the premises at once without question or hesitation. The Moorish National Public Federal Government will provide remedy to you at our discussion. We remain in honor and governing accordingly. The property has been conveyed into the Moorish National Public Federal Government Trust under record numbers. MACN-R followed by nine nines along with the private trust of and then you put your trust doc your trust information here. And then you would put the map the document number that you assigned it. Oh no, that's the document number for the trust. Is wrong. Um when you download your trust, you don't download your actual trust. You do your declaration of trust. Yeah. When you put it on the record, that you filed it. Islam? Islam. Yeah, yeah. Because I know I got somebody's private trust they sent me. So you got to just, just file for, for the public record the declaration, which is just the declaring that you do have a private, you do have a sovereign Moorish trust established. Islam? So the property has been conveyed into this, the Yester Ramon by Trust, under this record number, which can be downloadable at uh, with a copy of the Declaration of Morris Trust from the website. I want to talk about the website in a second, but I'm not going to do it now. Once I finish, I'll talk about it. Okay. All utilities and living services at Morocco are at no charge or feudal fee to the Moorish American Nationals. The Moorish National Republic Federal Government is the only government with superior jurisdiction at North America. Only gold and silver are to be used at, as currency and payment of debts, fiat currency, Federal Reserve notes are outlawed forever. You will not charge the Moorish American Nationals any currency, money, or otherwise as you are the debtors and the Moorish American Nationals are the creditors. So that's all the documentation. If you want to add some type of stuff here, do it, but just get used to doing the document itself and getting comfortable with processing liens before you start making adjustments to the actual language, Islam, because this language was specifically tailored so you don't adhere yourself to any contracts, okay? And then you, and then you have here collateral as it's held in trust. The trust information is up here. The, the, a debtor is a transmitting utility. The debtor is a transmitting utility under 6A. So all of this stuff is pre-filtered, but obviously research this document and then you have all this other information like option eight has the governing principles does extend to the, the American mandate for the land held in Geneva Switzerland 1948 the United Nations American mandate for the land and the United Nations trustee 1948 and the amendment 20 sections of the Constitution uh, ratified November the 18th 1865 but we know that couldn't have been ratified in November 1865 because that the, the Congress adjourned to the idea. We, the Moors of North America, claim trustee, uh, executor, administrator of the beneficiary stated in all lands, Western Hemisphere, as the mandate. So um, I am just going to say this. I want to take this part out. I would take this out, y'all. It's unnecessary. Islam, um, the states ratified, not the Congress. The state. Is it the states? Okay. 
Yes, uh, talk to Light about it. It was the states. Okay. Um, let me go. I'm going to go to one of my lanes I just did because there was a little bit more language I wanted to add. Uh, where's my other culture? All right, let me do this one. And it's just a uh, notification that I'm about to add to it, which is just uh, as soon as it comes up. And it's just this one here. Nothing in this affidavit, declaration, proclamation, command shall be construed as consent to any jurisdiction that is not the jurisdiction of our ancestral estate. So I just wanted to go find that to add it to this document. Okay? And this is the end of how to process the lien. But this is just, once you finish this, so let me just put this here. I'm not going to print it, type it out. But there's some other documents that are attached to it that I processed and placed for the public record. So I'm not going to do all of that now because I don't want to waste all this time because we only got about another 20 minutes for the end of this broadcast. But once you complete this document, there's two other documents that you want to get, get versed in and we're adding that to the affidavit section of the file section of the group. As well as we've been updating the website and all of this information will be on the website within the next 24 hours. Um, I had a, a conference call earlier today with a uh, post head of uh, Il uh, Chicago, Illinois, Azil, who's on this call in this platform right now, and we're updating that website. So all of it, all of the affidavits and the records will be on the website. So now you won't have such a hard time finding things because they'll all be on the website, which is ultimately where I wanted them. And I was only using the file section of the Facebook group in interim until we updated the website. So within the next 24, 48 hours, that website will be completely updated with the assistance and the lovely support of Ideal, who's on this call. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Islam, Islam, Islam. You don't know how happy you made me. So I'm opening up the cover letter to the, notifi to the, to the uh, lien and the notification because I do not duplicate efforts unnecessarily. Um, and it's about saying, like, this, this document is only going to be mailed to that one uh, location, which I spe specified earlier today. It's going to be emailed to all three in PDF format, and I have a template for that as well, but it's going to be mailed to the location, the actual lien for the record, okay? So, but the cover letter that's going to go with the, the lien will be this. Well, this is not the cover letter. Hold on. This is the cover letter. And the cover letter is just, it's called the cover letter for the affidavit of the UCC1 financing statement. You date it. You put the mailing location, your mailing information here. And then everything else is standard, right? So all this stuff is standard, which is affidavit of sovereign American gold law command, the termination of corporate trustee contracts. These are all affidavits that's been that linked to my script account, but once we update them to the website, all of these links will revert over to the government website. Uh, the Notice of Existence of the Moorish American Council, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. You're going to place your lien here. I mean, I'm sorry. You're going to place a link to your record number for your declaration of trust here. This is where this is going to go. Um, the Trust Declaration of the Moorish Divine National Movement the Declaration of the Moorish National Republic Federal Government, the Declaration of Independence of the Constitution, uh, the original Constitution for the United States, the Zodiac Constitution, and the Articles of Confederation. You're not going to attach all these documents. This form tells them, go download it yourself, read it, and start abiding by the law. So this cover page is going to be attached to the name, which is going to go out to a uh, Muriel browser and going to be emailed to those three email addresses, copy whoever you want to copy onto those emails for, uh, for additional validation in public records and upload them to whatever website, the, 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 the public record uh, file section of the Facebook group, the Morris American Consulate Public Records Facebook group, as well as soon we'll be now updating all of these links onto the Morris American Consulate website within the next week. 
So those all of the every lane that we have that we've recorded that you've recorded will eventually be uploaded to that website for everybody to find that information on the public notifications page. Islam. So that's the cover letter that's going to be attached to the lane in PDF. And then you have the notification. Now, this is notification of the affidavit of UCC1 financing statement. This notification is going to go to the actual corporation company or non de gear straw man that you're leaning. So if you lean your cousin, you're going to give her notification that you leaned her. It's a two-page document. It has you listed as as a per as the Morsh American and the corporation or non de gear you're leaning. So that's the information that's going to be going there. Notice the agent is notice the principal. Notice the principal is notice the agent. Greetings. I am Sharon Tracy Cabe, a Morris American National, and Propio Persona, Sujuris, and Propio Solo, and Propio Jerez. I am an Aboriginal, Indigenous, sovereign Morris American National, and I am exercising all of my rights at this time and at all points in time. Whereas you, as the United, uh, Sunny Repu, United States uh, Department of Agriculture have been found in violation of the Treaty of Peace and Friendship of 1786 and 1836 and the Constitution for the United States of America 1789 and 1791. You are hereby notified that an affidavit of the Universal Commercial Code 1 financing statement lien has been placed on you in both your personal and professional capacity. See attached for further details. Attached are the following affidavits of written International Commercial, uh, Universal Commercial Code Finance Statement, Fixture Filing, Land, and Commercial Liens. And then you're going to list the lien. You're going to put the link here where it says the link. Now, if you have a Scribd account, put the link to the Scribd account. If you recorded it with the Morris American Consulate, put the link there. Or if you recorded it on some other platform, put it there. And if you don't record it on any public platform, just attach it with this notification of the link. Attach the link with the notification of the link. If you want to Send them a copy of the lien and give you know, as opposed to sending them to um, the website to download them at their own leisure. Islam. And so this is then all of the documents that I specified earlier are here. Hold on for one second, y'all. So, and this is the notification of the UCC1 lien. You're going to mail this. You don't have to certify it if you want to certify it because this is just letting them know you've been leaned and this is why you've been leaned. And if, let's say, they send you, you can also attach the, the, uh, the fraudulent mispresentment also. So say you lean um, the so-called uh, bank tellers operating as magistrates who are trying to liquidate uh, debt bonds. You lean them. You put that presentment. This is why you're being leaned, and you can file a copy of their lien with that file down in that county. I suggest you do that. So when you file the writ of discovery, abrogation of jurisdiction, default notice, or the notice of removal, file their, the lien too. I actually implore you to do that in conjunction with all of that other stuff. Because we got to also realize what they're doing at these tribunals. And the more you watch the videos, it will come more clear. And I don't want to waste the last 13 minutes of this platform to discuss that. I want to put the last 10 to 15 minutes as open dialogue for anyone who has questions in regards to uh, this class on um, the Affidavit Universal Commercial League. Ms. Long? This is Ishmael Bay. I have a question. Okay, um, as far as the certifications at the receivers that you have, like the mayor, diesel records, the tax office, and you only use one certified receipt um, um, article instead of using for all three, um, why is that, Islam? Because notice the agent is notice the principal, notice the principal is notice the agent, and I don't have to send them all a copy of it, and I don't want to. I don't want to waste my resources on sending all these people notifications of the liens because me putting it on a public forum, me letting them know that they've been leaned, and me sending it to the recorder of deeds is enough. And until we're sitting mailing allodially, why send it to all three of them? Notice the agent is notice the principal. 
Islam will yield the floor. If you want to send it to the mall, send it to the mall. Mm-hmm. Islam, Sharon, this is Sister Brunilla White Bay. Are, are we not sending the, the uh, blank one C, uh, UCC? No. 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 Okay, no. Eliminate. No need. No need to do it. That was in the beginning to get them to understand why we were sending this affidavit. As we as we educate them and and, and give them knowledge as to the laws, certain things we're going to stop doing because it's no need to give them that preliminary. So when we were initially sending the blank UCC1 uh, documents, that was just to let them know this is what we're sending that is to put a lien on this corporation. So once we educate them, you can continue to do that if it's if it supports you, but I don't do that. I just okay. send them the actual commercial commercial lien. Islam. Islam, Sharon, I have a question about from when we first were starting the liens, it had the uniform commercial code on there. So all you those liens universal. Mm-hmm. So all those that I did prior, just leave them, or should I? I should reiterate again, and just. Don't have to. Okay. All right. Because the spell starts with the intent. It starts with the thought. Okay. And you, all right. and you, you're the master of all of that. Mm-hmm. Islam. Long. In long. Any other questions? Don't wait till Facebook to start talking about junk and don't wait to text me. Don't be texting me no questions. Because I'm going to tell you, go watch that video on YouTube. Watch me. <laughs> I'm telling you now. I'm going to be like, go to the YouTube and watch the video. Okay, so because Sharon, this... You guys. Go ahead. So what you did now, you want us all to actually do this type of lean? This ag- agricultural lien ourselves. No, only one lien is necessary. No, nope. one lien is okay. necessary. You don't need thousands. Nope. So because I did this lien, you don't have to do it. Okay. All right. Because this, this, I'm not speaking as an individual more. I'm mm. speaking first as a as a Moorish American national. Second as a vizier of the Mohammedan, uh, a Mohammedan judge of the Moorish American consulate in the Moorish National Republic federal government, and all Moors are tied to this lien. An individualized lien. Islam. Okay. Islam. Mm-hmm. Islam, Sharon. That's why, that's why Islam. Why and note that everything that you do, every more, is attached to that lien. Yes. So that's why you don't do liens selfishly, but like this chant trade together, bay, and I'm doing this lien for a million dollars because you because you fought, you didn't follow the law. So then they can just off you, and then the liens dissolve because you did. <laughs> So that's and know that the ancestors will smite you for that as well because they yeah, all died for our cause. Yeah. Islam. Islam? So, say Islam. that again, Sharon. Say that one more time. Oh, I said the ancestors will no, smite you Sharon. because they all died for our cause. No, Sister Sharon, say what you just said before, Brother Demetrius. Oh, damn, really? What did I say? <laughs> I all right, said, I, all right, then. I have a question. I have a question. Under the, over the, under the cover letter, it's got the um, it's got the uh, the address of the North America Consulate. So right under the address, you put the corporation's address, correct? Oh no, for the cover letter, you just put your information here. Oh, all, all right. the information is in the UCC one name. Oh, all right. Thank you. It's fine. So, Empress Sharon, where do we get the the cover letter from? We already ha- it can be sent to. I create, or? I create, I create, huh? I created this cover letter and it's affidavit A zero thirty four, and it'll be uploaded to the file section as well as to the um the website because me and Ideal are updating that website okay. with the next couple of days, so it'll be available. But I can email it to you if you want it. Yes, my Empress. Thank you. I'll email it right now before I forget. I thought I did this already. <laughs> yeah, and it's too it long. Is long. Sure. Mr. Sharon, I just wanted you to know I went to the site where you had uploaded a lot of the documents. I think it was like 24 documents, and that was a lot easier to print off. 
Just thank you for that. From the website? Yes. When the hell did I do that? I didn't do it yet. What you talking about? I then, well maybe it was on um where did I go? I went to No, there was twenty four documents that was uploaded. I well, down, that might have been I, ideal. He might have did that already because I didn't do it okay, yet. I printed, I it. Yeah, there are twenty four. I don't I have printed off six already. I said this is a whole lot easier because every I last know, one it's been it's been nerve wracking trying uh, trying to get all this stuff on there and needing to be on the website. You know what I'm saying? Like I needed to be on the website to do all of this stuff. So it, it did belabor me because I knew the people needed that on the website. So matter of fact, let me go to the website to see what it looked like because, like I said, we have been updating it. Yes. Well, it's a and, lot easier to make sure you can find what you need. So you can do what you need to get done, and you don't gotta call me harassing me. <laughs> Sharon, I need you to email me this document. I'm like, go to watch, the file section. I can't it. find it on the file section. I'm like, well, what you want me to do? Watch that. So I'm going to the website. Like I said, I'm so happy because this has been belaboring for Sharon Tracy Gale Bay for the for the past several months. And as you're looking, we changed the filters up top. We're we're still working on it. So constantly go to the website. I'm pushing everybody here now. Versus the file section of Facebook because this will help you get everything done. So we're going to be making some changes. So public records is going to be updated. But I think this is the one, the, the grid. This is the grid, the Morris American Content Grid and Outline. And then, like I said, it's being worked on. But the grid is displayed and the, 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 the uh, files are going to be listed at the bottom eventually. I don't know where you saw the documents, but eventually they're going to be in this area. Once we updated it, we're still working on um, making adjustments to the website. So you'll be able to see hyperlinks on this document to click on the, the, the document. So you might have been looking at another website that might have not, might have been, you know, they be, they be nested a punch over here. I'll be telling Morris, can y'all help us with the website? But they too busy trying to help themselves with their own website. <laughs> so I don't know where you got that from. I'm try trying to remember now. I know it was 26 of them, and I down and I printed off um, six of them at one time. So the cover letter was on there. I was following along with the cover letter that I had. Was it the one drop? I'm I'm not sure, Sharon. Um, well, tell me where it was. You better bring that information before you get off the platform. It's on so my I tablet. I, have to, I would have to go back on my tablet and see where I got it from. Yeah, go find it. Go find it right now. Islam. 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 Sister Renee L. Islam Renee L. Um, I just want to know how do you monetize the the lean? Y'all don't know how this works yet. I'm gonna fight y'all. I'm not answering that question because because we <laughs> answer it. I know why your aunt's asking this question, but you don't understand what's going on, <laughs> and that's why you're asking it. I was like, in my classes, is to get you to realize that you don't need to monetize the lead at all. And I, I want to explain why. <laughs> because you're going to live alodially, y'all. And the way you're going to operate and the purpose of the lease is not to monetize them to get a financial benefit from it, even though you can do that. It's to shut them down in their fraudulent fiat process. Because you're not supposed to have to go into those, into those facilities or those corporations to, to, to transfer, transfer through uh, fiat because they're in breach. Would you really be considered or worried about monetizing the lien if you could walk into the grocery stores and get what you need with your nationality ID and purchase all type well I'm using purchase as a just as a as a name to get all of the things you want. What you want to do is be the first party creditor and nobody else can stand in that position. Do you get a little Islam. bit of what I'm saying? Oh, well, well, well. First party credit tour, so we're dealing with credit. Say it again, babe. I couldn't hear you. First party credit tour, which means we're dealing with credit, not fiat. It's wrong. And the reason why you want to monetize the, the lien 
is because somebody else is utilizing your credit and you're not being the beneficiary and claimant of that or the first party creditor, someone else is doing it. And that's where the nom de gears came in. So you're taking them out of that trustee position and acting in your own capacity and administering your own estate, which is the credit. You understand what I'm saying? You don't get what I'm saying, y'all? It, it was stuck. It weighs too much. Yes, I get it. Okay. So the monetizing of the lien is not going to like, because if, if Moore's were to monetize the lien, the first thing they would do is take some fiat, even though the lien said gold and silver. <laughs> and they would go. They would go open up a another freaking account with another bank, and do and, and put themselves right back in the same pot they just jumped out of. Wow. Islam. Wow. Okay. It's Renee Elegant. All right. Um. So let me rephrase that question. How will I enforce my lien? The lien's already enforced. <laughs> You mean how are you going to go in the building and start operating? Is that what you mean? Yes. Can you go into, uh, let's say, Walmart? If, could, you, could you go into Walmart right now, ask for the keys, and operate that business? Be honest. You can say no. no. That's being honest. Okay. <laughs> you can't go in there and operate that, that corporation. And they're, they're supposed to be operating it for you, but they weren't supposed to overlay the fraud, which is the Federal Reserve System, over top of your corporation company, if you, go, if you got what I mean. So you're, t you're telling them to stop the fraud, but you've got to get competent, competent, so you don't want them to leave, let's say, per se, even though hands are going to trans transfer, so it won't be Albion in those positions anymore. It's just so you know, because someone else who has the, the, the resources are going to start managing those corporations unbeknownst to you because you can't operate them right now. And you don't want to because you're the first party creditor. You're like the board of directors, like the executive who comes in and just collects the finance and then go back and enjoy your life. Islam? Islam. Thank you, dear Moore. Islam. Islam. Point, point to make there, and what uh, Sharon is saying, and I hear the question is being asked, but you can start now living like the noble and the Lord you, you always were and stop worrying about where things are going to come from because they're already here. Just start being you. So you have to know you to do that. Islam. And to elaborate, and to elaborate on, you want to make sure instead of them take, instead of them going into your register and taking all your your wealth and putting it in their pockets, it'll be in yours because they can't do anything without you. So you can literally sit in sit in your 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 homes and relax and do absolutely nothing if you use. And you ain't got to worry about whether the whether food's going to be in the refrigerator, the lights are going to be on, and your children are going to be well taken care of. Uh, in Islam, uh, one addition, most of these stores, and particularly Walmart and Kroger's and stuff like that, you can order what you want online and have it delivered. So you really don't even have to go look at the store. You order what you want, and it'll be delivered to you. And... Uh, you go about your business. Islam. Islam. That's in Islam. A female sister, Sharon. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear Islam. Okay, can you uh, explain, is this the lean process because the gold is back on the land? And number two... Can you explain the gold being back on the land, how that happened? Islam. I think you already know the answers to both of those questions. The listening audience don't. <laughs> Islam. <laughs> the lean process is the lean process. So this process has been the process that anybody processes or completes when there's a breach of duty and a breach of trust. So when there's a breach of duty and a breach of trust as the Aboriginal Indigenous 
sovereigns of the land, it is your responsibility to put them back in alignment to sanction them. So the lien is a sanction on their operate, their unlawful and fraudulent operations, which you have to be in your proper person in order to effectuate that. So the lien process is the lien process, and you have it because you're the first party secure creditor because it was established through your acquiescence of your sovereignty initially. So that's the lien process. The gold standard was effectuated uh, August the 1st, 2019 by the Supreme Judiciary, but everything that preceded it had to happen before we can take it off the land responsibly, the, the fiat system. Because nobody else can make these declarations and commands but the sovereigns. You understand what I'm saying? So the gold standard is the actual secure party creditors, if you want to call them the sovereigns, stating as a government in a unified front that uh, fiat is no longer utilized on our land and we will be administering our own affairs as the sovereigns of the land, loyally. So instead of them taking, taking stuff out of your pockets and you acting like you don't see them taking stuff out of your pockets, they have no access to your pockets and they have to come completely through you. And the only way they'll be able to do business here is by upholding the laws, getting the subject paperwork, and, and dealing with the new agreements we establish. Because just like every application you, you signed as a nom de guerre, you gave them permission and you actually gave them a command to lord over you. And now you're just giving them the command to get the heck out of the way while you administer for yourself. Can I answer your question? Islam. Thank you for that. And we have the platform because we're four minutes over them. Can we adjourn? All the way live. Love. Islam packs. Wow. This will be uploaded on the platform a little bit later today so y'all can kind of like go through it and, and do your research and your study. And if anybody calls me and asks me questions about you see the links, I'm pointing you to this YouTube video. Y'all made me do it. I just need the cover letter, Sharon. I don't know if you sent it to me. I'm going to send it in a minute because I couldn't send it from my phone. i got to send it from the Internet. So I'm going to send it in Thank like you. a minute. One question, Sharon. He's an octopus. Yes. Um, yes, I hear you. Go ahead. Um, where I have some um, address, some mailing location changes and other information to uh, update on the website. Uh, do I send that to you or to yes. who? Yes. Is, 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 is it a lot of information? No, it's not a lot, <laughs> but it's, my, it's actually stuff that needs to be changed. Well, send it to me through text message. It'll be easier to find Islam. you. Islam. So I'm going to uh, adjourn. Pack that to more. Peace and love. Great you work. Sharon, Sharon, this is great, Sister great Penula. Work, uh, Don't give me a lot of I'm out. <laughs> great work. Sharon. Yes, Mama. Yeah, I think, um, are you going to, is, is the video going to be out soon? I it'll be out in less than 24 hours. It'll actually be out tonight. I just want, I'm going out with my sister for, for lunch, so I'll post it after I come back. All right. Islam. Islam. And I'll, t and I'll post it on social media so you'll see it. Eat, Islam? Respons eat responsibly. I will. I mean, but, you know, I've been wanting to do this all day, but my butt is telling me to get off the seat anyway. So, pack for tomorrow, y'all. Pack for tomorrow. Pack for tomorrow.